Parantaka Sundara Chola Chakraborty was seated in Dharma Singadahana in the Antaranga Mandirilo Sana Mandapam of Tanjapurai Palace. On either side of him sat the most important members of the palace. The Chola ministers, generals, and princes were standing before the emperor in respectful posture. Prati Vanamadavi, younger Prati Kuntha and Kajumbalar Princess Vanatha were seen among the benders. Punguzali was also seen at a distance reluctant to join them. Among the men there were Parihapalyavetare, Chinapalyavetare, Prime Minister Anuradhar, Commander of the Army Parihavilar, Malajati Armalayam, Prince Arulmas Hivarma, and Madhuranthak Deva who was reborn as Punar. The Emperor looked at the people gathered in the council and asked, Have all the invitees arrived? Shall we see the King of Kadampur? said. The Sambhavarayar's son has just returned. Father and son will be here soon," said Parthapendra. Oh! Has Gandamara returned? What news has he brought? Has he brought the fugitives? asked Sundara Chola. No, Lord. He could not catch them. But he says he has killed Vandiyadeva. Another madman has not been caught, he has escaped," said Parthapendra. The great reaper now made a boast. Others expected him to say something. But he didn't say anything. Emperor said, I don't know what the consequences of my mistake will be. Prime Minister. You know my thoughts very well. I have invited the people who are most needed by me and my clan. You should tell them why I have called and my opinion. You can tell them more clearly than I can, can't you? Said. Agna. Emperor. Then the first minister said to the congregation. One might think that he had lost faith in the spoilers. The emperor did not want to give room to such a thought. I am speaking openly of a message which our king is reluctant to share. For that, the leaders of the royal clan gathered here must forgive me. Our king had for some time lost the strength of his legs due to physical illness. So his heart was weak. But more than that there was a mental illness that hurt him inside. You, who were the loyal companions of the Chola clan, who were related to the Chola clan by inheritance, and who were the diamond pillars supporting this great Chola empire, were alienated from each other and were enmity which hurt our emperor's heart and caused physical illness. All of you fought together in the Takola battlefield under the leadership of Rajad Hithita, who rode on an elephant and reached the hero's heaven. In that battle, the Chola dynasty failed due to Rajaditha's unexpected heroic death. But with your bravery, determination, and unity, you turned defeat into victory. You regained the Lost Throat region and the Gunga region. You defeated the Pandyas in the battlefield of Soerb and conquered the Pandya country and brought it under our direct rule. That is why he was sending Kari Kalar to come here. Meanwhile, an unexpected tragedy happened. When the emperor came to know that Kari Kalar was coming to the palace of the king of Kadampur, the emperor was delighted. He thought that through this the difference between you will be removed. He thought that if Kari Kalar marries Sambhavarayar's daughter then you will all agree as before and the kingdom issue can be settled easily. I thought so too. Many of you must have thought so. Even Arthirukho Valar king did not forbid Aditha Kari Kalar from going to Kadampur because of that. But all of our desires play a role. Prince Kari Kalar met his untimely death in the Kadampur palace, when the emperor came to know that Kari Kalar was coming to the palace of the king of Kadampur, the emperor was delighted. He thought that through this the difference between you will be removed. He thought that if Kari Kalar marries Sambhavarayar's daughter then you will all agree as before and the kingdom issue can be settled easily. I thought so too. Many of you must have thought so. Even Arthirukho Valar king did not forbid Aditha Kari Kalar from going to Kadampur because of that. But all of our desires play a role. Prince Kari Kalar met his untimely death in the Kadampur palace, when the emperor came to know that Kari Kalar was coming to the palace of the king of Kadampur, the emperor was delighted. He thought that through this the difference between you will be removed. He thought that if Kari Kalar marries Sambhavarayar's daughter then you will all agree as before and the kingdom issue can be settled easily. I thought so too. Many of you must have thought so. 
Even Arthirukhovalar king did not forbid Aditha Karikalar from going to Kadampur because of that. But all of our desires play a role. Prince Karikalar met his untimely death in the Kadampur palace, he thought that if Karikalar marries Sambhavarayar's daughter then you will all agree as before and the kingdom issue can be settled easily. I thought so too. Many of you must have thought so. Even Arthirukhovalar king did not forbid Aditha Karikalar from going to Kadampur because of that. But all of our desires play a role. Prince Karikalar met his untimely death in the Kadampur palace, he thought that if Karikalar marries Sambhavarayar's daughter then you will all agree as before and the kingdom issue can be settled easily. I thought so too. Many of you must have thought so. Even Arthirukhovalar king did not forbid Aditha Karikalar from going to Kadampur because of that. But all of our desires play a role. Prince Karikalar met his untimely death in the Kadampur palace. Are we going to find out how it happened or not? It would be better if you speak up knowing this, said Thirukhovalar Malayaman. Yes, it is impossible to form any idea above without knowing it, said the commander. Heroes. What is done is done. The emperor deems it necessary not to stir about what is gone, said Prime Minister Anuradhar. How can that be proper? The justice system of the Chola clan is world-renowned. Even if an innocent orphan dies in this kingdom, it is investigated how it happened. After someone is found to be responsible for it, the appropriate punishment is imposed. Then how can the untimely death of Ilongo, who was crowned as the crown prince, be left uninvestigated? Said Commander Periya Velar. Sundara Chola sighed and said, Uncle Kajam Balur. Listen. Can anyone else be more saddened than I by the untimely death of my dear son? I say no inquiry myself. Why? I know for sure that no one here is responsible. I gave away my son as a reward for my sin. Tell me what is atonement? I will do it, don't look for another reason. Said. Lord. By saying this, it seems that you want to save someone who is responsible for the crime. The people of the country are already talking about the cause of the prince's death. It is better to find out the truth and bring it to light. Whoever is guilty must be punished. Said the small gardener. One hundred words. That is the honest royal system. If this heinous crime is not investigated and punished, the people of the country will lose faith in the administration of justice. Said Parthipendra. Elders. Why so much thought and argument about this? Pardon and grace if what this boy is saying is too preachy. The culprit has been punished. I myself have returned with my own hand to kill Badakan Vandiyadeva, who killed Prince Karikalan and who ruined my sister's life and beat her mad. What more is the inquiry? Said Kanamaran. When the chief minister was first speaking, Kanamaran came there. The others noticed his presence only after hearing his voice. The eldest of them, Palyavetare, muttered in a low voice, Shut up! Such a child has come to Sambhavarayar of Kadampur. The chief minister Anuradha said, Gandamara. Is it true that you killed Vandiyadeva with a veal? Did you see him? Did you not chase him at night? Said. Prime Minister. I know you don't always have faith in me. Could it be that I don't recognize you because it's night? He's a hero too. Didn't he fight you? Yes, they have no faith in my bravery either. Therefore, I will appeal to the Emperor. There were two people who ran away. One was a madman who had been in our underground prison for some years. When he tried to stop me, the other was approaching the other side of the river. I threw a net and killed him. He must be a Vandiyadev of the Vanara clan. Have you not brought the dead man's body with you? If I had known you would be so suspicious, I would have searched a little further in the north wind flood. But this magic advice could not have come to the council. Said Kanamaran. Yes, it would be a great loss if you didn't come. Said Thalapathy Chinap Pulvaterayar. Brother. Why is it so hard for you to find Vandiyadeva? Asked the great Velar Buddha Vikramakesari. Would you like to hear this? 
The tragedy happened in my house. If the real culprit is not caught, will you not suspect me and my father? Sundara Chola intervened and said, Son. Kandhamara. I will not doubt anyone else who doubts such things. Do I not know your father's devotion to me? Let him go. Where is the great Sambuvarayar? Said. Emperor. I have to tell the shame of our family. I was telling my father that I have returned after killing Vandiyadeva. My sister Manamegala was listening. When she heard what I said, she came to kill me with a knife. My father is trying to calm her down and calm her rage. He will come soon. He sent me to tell me that he would accept whatever was decided in this council of ministers. Said Kanamaran. Father. Your sister already said I killed the prince. Wasn't she saying that like a crazy person? Said old Malay Aman. Yes, yes. She said that to hide the crime of Vandiyadeva and escape him. She was not completely mad then. Madness is gone now. Woe to our clan! Said Kanamaran. Young Sambuvaraya. You say so decisively that it was Vandiyathevar who killed Prince Karikalar? How is that? Did you see it with your own eyes? Or did anyone who saw it tell you? Asked the Prime Minister. Minister. Do you need a glass for the wound on your hand? That monkey clan warrior was there where the prince was found dead. Looking at his face, it was as if he was written as a criminal. That was the young queen's Antipurim of Palvur. What else did he go there for? If he was not a criminal, why would he have escaped from the underground prison? Said Kanamaran. Parthapendran said, the chief minister has accepted the responsibility of apprehending the person who escaped from the underground prison and surrendering him. I will remind him at this time. Komakan of the Palavar clan. It is true that I have accepted it. But I did not expect that the young Sambuvarayar would become the judge and decide and execute the sentence like this. Vandiyathevar also came from an ancient monkey clan. His ancestors once ruled a great kingdom. They gave a woman to the Chola clan and established a relationship. King Kurunila. If there is a crime against those who came from the clan, it is the tradition that the emperor himself sits on the throne and investigates and decides. Said Chief Minister Aniruthapramurayar. Sir. It is tradition that an escapee may be captured alive or dead. Said Palavar warrior Parthapendra. Didn't the young Sambuvarayar bring Vandiyathevan lifeless? Did he leave him in the north wind flood and come? Said Prime Minister Anuradhar. At that time, when the great Sambuvarayar entered the Mandira Hall, all eyes turned towards him. Everyone noticed the anguish on his face. Kanamaran went near him and said in a soft voice, How is Manamegali? He asked. Sambuvarayar said, She is like that. I have left your mother to guard her. He said in a loud voice, somewhat harshly. The emperor looked at Sambuvarayar and said, Sir. If it is necessary for you to be near your Selvak Kumari, you can do so. We can keep our advice for tomorrow. No, Lord. It's no use for me to be near her. Perhaps it would be useful if Vandiyathevan, the warrior of the monkey clan, who had given up his life because of my son's handiwork, came back to life. Said Sambuvarayar. The anguished grief and bitterness of his speech caused the congregation to fall silent for a while. Prime Minister Anuradhar said, Sir. We were talking about the tragic incident that happened in your palace. We all feel how much their hearts are hurt because the prince had to die an untimely death in their palace. The emperor did not want to make himself responsible in any way. However, in order not to spread all kinds of rumors in the cities of the country, how did the prince's death happen? Wouldn't it be good if we knew for sure? The people gathered in this assembly think so. Do they have anything to inform about it? The young Sambuvarayar achieves that the prince's death was caused by Vandiyadeva of the Vanara clan. What is their opinion? He asked. Sambuvarayar was stunned for a while. Then he looked around. When his eyes fell on Kandamara, 
he said, yes, yes. This fool said so even then. I did not believe it, and I still do not believe it today. I heard his words and invited Prince Kari Kaler to come to the Kadampur Palace. So many perverse consequences have taken place. Have I and my clan been dishonored forever? said. Old Malay Aman said in a pitiful voice, Sambuvariyar. Don't panic. What has happened has happened. You have invited my grandson to your mansion with good intentions. No one here intends to make themselves responsible for Karakalan's death. That is why we want to know the truth. It would be good if you help us. Said. What can I do to help? My son says one thing, my daughter says another. I can't believe either of them. I don't know the truth either. It's like being blindfolded. Ask a bigger detective than me to find out what really happened. Ask him. He is the root cause of everything. Dot he was the first one who secretly brought Madhurandak Deva to Kadampur and asked me to give my daughter in marriage to him. Since then, my family fell in love. I know that Madhurandak Devar has now mysteriously disappeared. Later, the great Palyavatarayar brought his queen. He brought the prince from Kanchi as well. Both of them. He left my house and left. Ask him why he left. Ask where his maiden has gone now. Thus Sambuvarayar went on talking like a madman. The emperor interrupted, Enough. Enough. Stop. That is why I told you that there was no need for an inquiry into what had happened. You did not listen. Is it not enough that you already have differences? Do you want new quarrels? You are not responsible for what happened in your palace, Sambuvaria. That is why I asked you to be released from the dungeon immediately. My valiant son's untimely death is due to my old sins. No one is to blame. You don't have to say anything about it. Not even the great avenger. Said. Then the great Pluvatere opened his throat like a roaring lion and spoke in a loud voice, O Chola tribe. Be merciful and forgive me. I must not speak. I must say what is in my heart. I must speak the truth as I know it. Yes, Lord. Why should I speak the truth and fulfill my promise without saying it? I thought of letting it go. I had made a promise that if I could not save the people of the Chola clan from danger in the future, I would cut off my own head and die. I was unable to save Adita Kari Kaler. Therefore, I must fulfill my promise. Before that, I want to tell the truth that I know. Otherwise, there will be many unnecessary suspicions and vain accusations will be made. Whatever. There was perfect silence in the assembly when the great destroyer had finished speaking. Everyone's heart melted for a moment. The emperor said in a subdued voice, Uncle. Think about it. Why do you want to talk about things that have happened? The lives of the dead will not come back. You would not have repented and committed any kind of betrayal to the Chola clan. Therefore, let's forget what happened and talk about what is to happen. Said. No, sir. I must speak about what has happened. I must speak of how great a betrayal I was about to commit to the Chola clan. It was Durga Devi, the clan goddess of both them and me, who prevented that from happening. I must pay my offering to that mother Parmswari. Please listen to what I have to say. Said the great reaper. Seeing that he could not stop him from speaking, the emperor was also idle. Later, Pariya Palyavatarayar narrates everything that happened since he met Nandini on the roadside three years ago and fell in love with her. Despite frequent warnings from his brother, Chinap Palyavatarayar, he said he did not care. He said that due to Nandini's instigation, Madhurand Hakativara had planned to take possession of Chola Singhadanam and had conspired with other petty kings for it. He told about Nandini's taking Madhuranthagan to Mudupalak and the midnight meeting at Sambuvarayar mansion. At first, he said that it was because of Vandiyathevan that he became suspicious of Nandini, and from that he got the idea about the Pandian conspirators. But from time to time, Nandini's infatuation, Maya, was hiding his knowledge, he said sadly. At last, 
he said that he came to know the plan of the Pandya conspirators as he was caught in the flood of spoils and rushed back to Kadampur. On the way, he disguised himself as Kala Muga Siva, and with the help of Itumpankari, he reached Apuram by a secret route, and he hid in the Jaffa storehouse and delayed for a minute to eavesdrop on the conversation between Nandini and Prince, and Prince Manta fell in the meantime. He narrated that when he rushed to support him, the lamp went out, that he was surrounded by many people and attacked him, that he fainted, that he came to Prujna in the Green Mountain Cave and then came back. He said that he came to know the plan of the Pandya conspirators as he got caught in the flood of looting and rushed back to Kadampur. On the way, he disguised himself as Kala Muga Siva, and with the help of Itumpankari, he reached Apuram by a secret route and he hid in the Jaffa storehouse and delayed for a minute to eavesdrop on the conversation between Nandini and Prince, and Prince Manta fell in the meantime. He narrated that when he rushed to support him, the lamp went out, that he was surrounded by many people and attacked him, that he fainted, that he came to Prujna in the Green Mountain Cave and then came back. He said that he came to know the plan of the Pandya conspirators as he got caught in the flood of looting and rushed back to Kadampur. On the way, he disguised himself as Kala Muga Siva, and with the help of Itumpankari, he reached Apuram by a secret route, and he hid in the Jaffa storehouse and delayed for a minute to eavesdrop on the conversation between Nandini and Prince, and Prince Manta fell in the meantime. He narrated that when he rushed to support him, the lamp went out, that he was surrounded by many people and attacked him, that he fainted, that he came to Prujna in the Green Mountain Cave and then came back. He also said that he hurried back and went to Kadampur. On the way, he disguised himself as Kala Muga Siva, and with the help of Itumpankari, he reached Apuram by a secret route, and he hid in the Jaffa storehouse and delayed for a minute to eavesdrop on the conversation between Nandini and Prince, and Prince Manta fell in the meantime. He narrated that when he rushed to support him, the lamp went out, that he was surrounded by many people and attacked him, that he fainted that he came to Prujna in the Green Mountain Cave and then came back. He also said that he hurried back and went to Kadampur. On the way, he disguised himself as Kala Muga Siva, and with the help of Itumpankari, he reached Apuram by a secret route, and he hid in the Jaffa storehouse and delayed for a minute to eavesdrop on the conversation between Nandini and Prince, and Prince Manta fell in the meantime. He narrated that when he rushed to support him, the lamp went out that he was surrounded by many people and attacked him, that he fainted, that he came to Prujna in the Green Mountain Cave and then came back. By then Prince Mantu also informed that the cow had fallen. He narrated that when he rushed to support him, the lamp went out, that he was surrounded by many people and attacked him, that he fainted, that he came to Prujna in the Green Mountain Cave and then came back. By then Prince Mantu also informed that the cow had fallen. He narrated that when he rushed to support him, the lamp went out, that he was surrounded by many people and attacked him, that he fainted, that he came to Prujna in the Green Mountain Cave and then came back. Emperor. In this way I became a traitor to the Chola clan. I gave a place to the Pandya conspirators in my palace. I allowed them to take the materials needed for the conspiracy from our treasury. The conspirators planned to kill themselves and their sons at the same time. A deaf and dumb goddess took her life. She gave and saved him. Pani Selvara was saved by an elephant, a hideous and ignorant animal. I tried to save Aditha Kari Kalar and failed. I was the cause of his untimely death in the beginning, in the middle and in the end. Sir! Here I will fulfill the vow I took in the presence of Durga Parmswari. After saying that, he threw the sword he was holding in his long arm. Everyone who knew his intention stood in awe. Little by little, Pani's Selvar, who had come close to him, rushed forward and grasped the sword-wielding hand of the great farmer. Sir! Wait! By the way, during the coronation ceremony of the kings of the Chola clan, it is the Palavatarayas who take the crown and place it on their heads. Even during my consecration, they must crown with their own hands. After that, they can do as they wish. Until then, wait. Said. Needless to say, these words left the emperor and the other petty kings in awe. 